The time is now. What's up, world? I hope everyone has had a blessed week, but you already know what it is. We're here once again going in. Say it with me. Talking the truth Thursday. One more time. Talking the truth Thursday. Let's get it. Okay, so this week we're going to try something a little different. We're coming from a different perspective. A few weeks ago we talked about putting God first. Putting the kingdom of heaven first. But I really feel like God wants us to go back there so we can see that not only can you change the game in a positive way, but if you do not put God first, if you don't put the kingdom of heaven first, you can change the game in a negative way. Yes, there is a possibility to change the game in a way where the outcome will not be positive at all. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to get really real today, so strap in. But where we're going in the text is a very familiar passage. We're going back to the same text we used when we talked about putting the kingdom first, but this time we're exploring what was going on with Cain. What was happening with Cain when he did not put God first? So let's dive in. Okay, so we know that, that Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a worker of the ground. He was a farmer. And his brother Abel, his brother Abel was a herdsman. He was a sheep keeper. Cain offers God a offering, an offering, just some of the fruit of the ground. While Abel, on the other hand, offers God from the first of his flock. And God regards Abel. He shows favor to Abel and his offering, but he does not do the same for Cain. And the text tells us that Cain was angry. But not only was he angry, he was very angry. And we also can see that he was jealous. Because the reason why he was angry was that God showed favor to someone else. God showed favor to his brother, but not him. And he was angry. He, he was angry, but not only angry, but jealous at the same time. But understand, anger has never existed until this point. That there's no reference point to anger. We cannot find a point of reference to his mother and father, Adam and Eve, the first two beings that ever walked the earth, the first two beings that were created. We cannot find a point of reference that points to Adam and Eve about anger. So what that tells us is that Cain has now birthed something that has never existed. He has now birthed anger into life, but he's only beginning to change the game. He's only beginning, not in a positive way, but a negative way. Because God gives him a chance to do what was right. He gives him a chance. He tells Cain, he says, if you do what's right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what's right, sin is crouching at your door. It's waiting for you. It desires you. God gives him a chance to do what was right. Because a part of being a game changer is not just knowing what's right, but doing what's right. A part of being a game changer is not just knowing what's right. But doing what's right, God gives him a chance to do what was right. But Cain passes on the opportunity and Abel and Cain end up in a field. And I'm sure you know the story. I'm sure you know what happened in the field. If you look at the NIV version, it tells us that Cain invited him to the field. Cain said, hey, well, let's go ahead on down to the field. But what that says is that Cain is now plotting against his brother. So he goes from anger to plotting. Because he invited him to the field in the first place. And we know that once he got to the field, he attacked his brother and he killed Abel. But a lot of times we miss the big part. We see the small part. Oh, he shouldn't have killed him. And you may say, that's not the small part. A murder isn't a small part. Well, it is. Because if you don't understand, murder has never existed until now. The big part is that now he has birthed murder. There's no reference point to someone killing someone else. It never existed, let alone it being his brother. He has not only introduced anger, but now he has introduced murder. I wonder how many things you've introduced. I wonder how many things you've birthed into your life because you did not put God first. Because that's exactly where it started. He did not put God first and it brought him to anger. And from anger, he began plotting. 
and from plotting, he killed his own brother. He is now birthing things that has never existed. He's changing the game, but not in a positive way, in a negative way, but God still gives him a chance to do what was right. Because a part of being a game changer is not just knowing what's right, but doing what's right. God comes in and says, where's Abel? Where's your brother at? God wanted him to tell the truth. He gave him a chance to tell the truth to do what was right. He says, where's your brother? And Cain, knowing he just killed his brother, but not only killed him, but left him in a field to rot. He says, I don't know. I don't know where that joke is. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> so now he goes from anger to plotting, from plotting to killing, from killing to lying. But here's the question. How can you lie to God? He must have forgot that God is God. How can you lie to God? He already knows. Well, guess what? We do it all the time. We do it all the time. Oh, God, I promise you I'll never do this again if you get me out of it. And then we go right back to it. Oh, God, I promise you if you just help me with this, I promise you I'm going to stop. Right at this moment, I'm going to stop if you help me. Then what happens as soon as we get out of it, we go right back to it. God, I promise you I'm going to pray more. I promise you I'm going to study more. I promise you I'm going to go to church more. If you just help me through this. And then what happens? We fall back into the consistency of not doing what we said we was going to do. How can you lie to God when he already knows? But we do it all the time. Cain tells God, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. And God says, your brother blood is crying out to me. God knew he was lying. So what that says to me is that he thought he could outsmart God. He says, I don't know. God said, where's your brother? He said, I don't know. He thought he could outsmart God. He thought he was smarter than God, which means he put himself above God. He's now exalting himself above God. He thought he was smarter than him. And because of that, what you used to yield from the ground will not yield to you anymore. The thing that was once your blessing has now become your curse. He used to be a farmer. He used to get grow fruit. But God said the ground will no longer yield fruit to you anymore. He went from anger to plotting. From plotting to killing. From killing to lying. From lying, exalting himself above God, thinking he could, he could outsmart God, putting himself above God. He put himself first and not God first. But isn't that how it started? In the beginning, he did not put God first. And he went down this long road of changing the game in a negative way. And he ends up in the same spot, still not putting God first, putting himself first. Thinking he could outsmart God, putting himself above God. That's exactly where he started. And because of that, in the beginning, he used to grow fruit. That was your blessing. But now, the thing that was your blessing has now become your curse. But if you would have just gave God your first fruit, you would not have no fruit in the end. Now you have no fruit. The Bible says, seek ye first in the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added. God knows how to take care of the birds. He takes care of the birds, and they, don't, they need to sow nor reap. But aren't you more important than the birds? Your father knows what you need. Seek ye first in the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added. Because if you do not seek God first, you can change the game, not in a positive way, in a negative way. But God gave him chance after chance to do what was right. He gives us chance after chance to do what is right. But because we are so focused on self, we change the game in a negative way. And when we don't put God first, we introduce things into our life that were not supposed to be there. We bring things into our life that change the game in a negative way. God gave him a chance to do what was right because a part of being a game changer is not just knowing what's right but doing what's right. Let's change the game the right way.